Okay, in this video we're going to change the way that this um, the applet is, is updated. And, and this has some very important reasons which we'll see as we progress in this um, tutorial. Now, the one thing we're going to have to do now is create another private class inside of our class. And to help me visualize and keep things separate, what I tend to like to do is I like to kind of separate my internal classes by commenting a bunch of stars above it, finding that closing brace and saying, commenting this is the end of the K listener class. And then sometimes I even put another set of stars below it. And this is helps this helps me really quickly see what's going on. And you can actually minimize all of that by hitting that plus symbol there. Okay, we're going to make another class, and this class is going to be called Timed Event. And this class is going to implement what's called Action Listener. So an, an Action Listener class is something that performs a specific action. And so we have to import the Action Listener class or interface, which make sure, if you're having problems, always check your import statements up above. And again, because this is an interface, we know action listener is an interface because it says implements. We need to include all of the methods associated with the action listener interface. So I'm going to jump out to the internet here, and I'm going to pull up action listener class in Java 7. And there it is. And I see that action listener is in fact an interface. And I scroll down and you see it has one method called the action performed method. So I can copy this right from here. I am going to copy right from there. And I'm going to go right inside here. And I'm going to say public void action performed action event E. And again, whenever an event is is initiated, there's some information that's always passed along. And in this case, it's an action event, which contains data about what's happening. But we do have to import an action event class as well. And so now if I build this, should build no problem. There it goes. OK, so what happens is, I want this to to happen every every so many seconds so I need to create a timer to do this so if I go up into the init section what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple things here the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an instant of timed event so I'm going to say timed event and I'm going to call it action is equal to a new timed event so that creates an instance of timed event but I'm also going to create an instance of what's called a timer. And I'm going to say timer t is equal to new timer. And then there's two parameters I have to pass to this. I have to pass first the number of milliseconds between each time this action is called, followed by the specific action to be called. So if I want this event to happen every second, I'm going to put 1,000 milliseconds here. The second thing I have to pass to it is, what it turns out, an action listener, inter, um, uh, sorry, an instance of timed event. So we've made an instance of timed event right here. So I'm going to pass it action. And again, since timer is a built-in class, I need to import it. And you really have to be careful here because often what happens is we will import this using the control enter shortcut and often it imports the wrong timer class. There's more than one timer class. The timer class that we want is actually imported from javax.swing.timer. So if we build this, we should build no problem. Awesome. And let's, for our purposes, just to see what happens, let's put in here system.out.println. Let's put the words event. So the first step, like I said, is we create the, the timed event object, then we create the timer object, 
which says every 1,000 milliseconds call action, which is our timed event. Now you have to tell the computer to start this, because right now it's kind of set up to do all this, but it hasn't actually started it, so I'm going to say t.start. So I'm going to build this, and I'm going to run this, and now what happens is, if we wait one second, watch down here, event, event, event. Every second is printing out event. I'm doing nothing. If I go up here and I change this to every 500 milliseconds, and I build this again, and I run it, a little faster now. See how that event's popping up? In the next video, we're going to take this timed event and use it to render our rectangle which moves around the screen.